Hello and welcome to part 3 of the M-Cloth tutorial for 3D Studio Max 2013. In the last tutorial, we learned how to make a ripping effect, like this one. However, you see I added a little bit more detail. Uh, the principle is the same. I pretty much just taught the technique on how to go about it. It's the, sa it's the exact same method. The only difference is I'm using Garment Maker to create the geometry as I discussed in the first tutorial and the ta I added a little bit more detail to the tears so if you look at if you look at my tear group um, you'll see that I uh, which vertices I selected to tear is just you know these the, this line here so it tears through here but then there's no bri there's no like connection here so this one doesn't tear so it stays together and then a few holes here so I'll make a tear here and uh, a line that goes up this way and one up here this just uh, this just uh, adds some nice detail um, little holes into uh, into the rip right so but in this tutorial we're gonna learn a little bit more uh, a little bit more dynamic example. So here you'll see I've set this up um, and I'm going to play this real quick or simulate this real quick. So this there's a box with um, an M cloth on it and it's being affected by the wind and then you see it rip from the wind effect. Right and all these pieces are flying off. This can be used for a shuttle that's re-entering orbit or um, maybe some kind of a meteorite ripping into pieces or you know whatever. So uh, how to go about this was um, pretty simple. So let's uh, let's uh, let's let's get started. So to start this off I first created a box Something like that. Maybe make it a um, make it an even box. 100, 100, 100. And then I'm going to tessellate this box just to have some more vertice points as well as get some nice triangulation going. I'm gonna take the tension down to zero and the teles tessellation maybe to yeah three seems fine. Now I'll move this box off the ground a little bit because I I didn't want uh, I didn't want it colliding with the ground. Now uh, I'm going to create a second box, which is going to be the cloth object itself. Um, to do that, I'm going to switch to uh, uh, to scale from center, and I'm just going to hold shift and drag out the second box. Give it, give it a little bit of room. I'm going to call this M cloth. So now we have our box. I also changed the wireframe color just to keep it a little bit more organized and see which one is which. And so we, now we have our base box inside and we have our M cloth on the outside. So just as before we're just going to add this to the M cloth collection and we're going to add the the initial box as a kinetic object because we're going to add animation to it so now if we already uh, simulate this we'll see that it's doing something it's kind of pushing everything outward this is of course because our our space is uh, our, our collision detection is too large, right? So now with the box selected, you can actually see what your collision is. Um, physics parameters for the box is 100, 100, so that's fine. Maybe I'll give it a little bit of space. 101, 101, 101. Now you can see uh, the effect that had in this corner. You can see this little boundary around that box, so that's the collision for the box. 
uh, and now I'm going to select on um, on the M cloth, and I'm going to check in the top viewport what is approximately the distance from this corner to that corner. So I'll go to help us, and I'm going to tape, and then I'll click where this corner is, and I'm going to check what the distance is to that corner, and it's approximately six units in length. Right? But remember, remember that we extended uh, the box collision object by one unit, so it's about five units in length, and we want a little bit of breathing room, so we're going to give this a collision space of four. So I'm going to go down here and say uh, the M cloth collision instead of 14 is going to be 4. And the self collision is going to be 2 so that it gets closer to itself. So now if we simulate this, so that's pretty good. Let's get started by adding uh, a wind force. So we're going to go to forces and add a wind. I'm going to rotate this maybe like so and uh, maybe point it at the box a little downward now it's sometimes it's hard to visualize what the wind is actually doing so what I personally like to do is I like to go into particle systems and create a spray that maybe has a thousand particles with a lifespan of, you know, 200, doesn't matter, because we just want to see what's happening. And then I'm going to align this to the wind, oops, also um, orientate it towards the wind, and uh, it needs to be flipped on its local axis by 180 degrees. Uh, that didn't really matter. And then I'm going to set the speed to zero. Okay, so these part I set the speed to zero, but if you scroll your uh, timeline, you won't see the particles because the particle scale is according to the speed that they are traveling. So if you turn the speed up, you'll see the particles. If you turn the speed higher, you'll see more of them. <coughs> you see them more prominent. But if you turn the speed to zero, you won't see them. However, we want to turn the speed to zero so that only the wind is affecting its speed. So we're going to use a, um, a space warp binding uh, to bind the wind to uh, the spray particles. And then we can see what's happening. Okay, what's the wind doing? Okay, it's blowing the particles as such, which is not bad, but we're going to need this to be a lot more dramatic. So by the time we get to 100, we're going to say that the wind is escalated to 100. At zero, we want the wind to be zero. So now the wind is uh, going from zero to 100 in 100 frames. And we're going to, going to say by, um, by 100, the turbulence is going to be 5, where the frequency of 2, maybe, so now let's see what ha what's happening. Uh, not bad. So this is uh, so this is going to be our wind. If we want now, we could delete the the, um, the spray. And now to have the wind affect the cloth, let's turn off auto key. And all you have to do is click on M cloth and add forces, and then click on the force you would like to add. Now, if we simulate, it will affect the f it will affect the um, cloth, but it's not doing much yet. This is because the cloth is not really very um, stretchy-ish. We're going to make this cloth less heavy, turning down the density to uh, one. We're also going to make this less stiff by turning up the stretchiness to. We don't want this to be very high. Let's try 0 0.2 and the bendiness may be 0 0.5. And let's take a look. So now you see, oh, the cloth is doing something, right? The, 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 the wind is having an effect on the cloth. But it's not as dramatic as I would like. Um, 
maybe we'll try to bump this up. Mm, there we go. Now we're talking. You see that? That had to be uh, that had to be pretty high. So this is one of the good things. Uh, you can set it to live, and you can actually see what's happening. Great. So um, there are a few problems. Obviously, um, the cloth is going through. Our collisions are too small. Um, but so far, so good. And I'll let you play with that to try to adjust that. So now we have the cloth being uh, uh, has a pretty good reaction to um, to the wind. I'm going to turn this cloth to maybe 300 at the end. Make it a little bit more dramatic. And I'm going to turn the frame to also 300. Okay, so let's take a look real quick. So it's kind of chill at the beginning for a second, and then it really, uh, it's really um, getting pushed around. Okay, now we're going to actually add the rip. To do this, usually if you want it to rip in specific areas, as we said in the last tutorial, you just select those vertices and you rip them. But for this case, we kind of wanted to rip all over, so I grab every single vertice and I make it a tear group. Right? Now, let's try to simulate this and see what happens. Maybe it'll go a little crazy. It's not bad. Okay. It's still good. It's still good. It's still good. Up, oh, it's ripping here. That's pretty good. Uh, we're not, uh, we're not gonna rip. Alright. That's pretty good, though. Um, it got one rip in, which is, uh, great. But we're gonna have to, uh, help this out a little bit. We can do that by going to frame 100, and you can bump this with force up to 500. Okay. So, now that we bumped the wind up to 500, let's see what's going on. So now it, it'll pop at the beginning. Now it's ripping. It's ripping. Ah, oh, it's ripping and it's coming apart. Oh, that's great. All right. So that's pretty much how you achieve the effect. Um, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. And um, yeah, rate it, comment. Um, constructive criticism is very welcome. Um, and subscribe if you're into it, and if you want to see some more tutorials, you know, request some. Let me know what's going on. All right, thanks. My name is Kevin Harper, and I uh, hope you had fun. Looking forward to seeing what cool things you come up with to uh, uh, to make some uh, with these type of um, techniques. Bye.